today's going to be a good day. I'm in Northern Ontario, going to an old iron mine. There should be Biff's, and an iron formation, and pyrites. So join me for this adventure. I think we're going to have some fun. Well, I've just arrived. And the first thing I'm finding in the tailings piles is banded iron. See that? Kind of nice stuff. I want to go look for the pyrites. But here's the spot. Down here, just a beautiful lake. Looks like a scene out of beachcombers. I think this is an old winch house. See the gears in there? Little fixer upper. So here we are. really see the iron in some of these rocks. Oh, I like the look of that. Isn't that pretty? See the bands in there? I think I'll take that. These are heavy rocks because of the amount of iron content. Isn't that nice? Look at the size of the jasper in there. Beautiful. Here's some crush, and amongst it are some quite nice rocks. We're collecting Easter eggs. A little something from my pocket. Snail. There's some really nice looking jasper in this crush. That one. That one, that one, that one. What a pretty jasper. And I spotted that one. I want that too. Look at that. Oh, nice. Nice. Anything else we should take? I'm gonna pick up one more. My pockets are full. My hand is full. So here's a quick and dirty education of what's known about banded iron. As you can see, it actually is layers. It's a sedimentary rock that was deposited perhaps 200, 250 billion years ago when the only life forms on earth were bacteria. The red, which I in this video called jasper, is a silica or a chert. And the gray stone is magnetite or hematite, typically hematite. If you cut this rock, it'll be nice and sparkly where the hematite is and the jasper will look like 
nice glowy jasper. So what we'll do is we will cut a few of these rocks. I'll cut this one, cut this one, and this one. Show you what it looks like inside and why I was so happy to pick these bad boys up. First up. This rock is banded iron, but up in that end, small pyrites. This is more typical for the kind of rock you'd find a pyrite crystal. There may be some in there, but you'd have to break it. I'm hoping to see some on the outside. See it right there? Here's another one. You can see the pyrite crystals there. There's some more up in that side. So, what we're really trying to do is find something a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so here's the top of Italian's pile. It appears to have the right kind of rock for pyrite. So I think I'll spend a few minutes here. Nothing is obvious on the surface yet. See anything? That's kind of neat. I don't know what that is. I put it in my pocket. Let's go up there. Here's one I pulled earlier. It's got little ones throughout. That one there. It's a nice little crystal actually. There's more up in that end. So I'm going to take that rock. What do you think, Daisy? Can you find me some pyrite? Guess not. Tiny, tiny right there. This one's kind of neat. See it all through here? Almost like acne on the rock. But that'd be a beast to carry out. That would be easier. There's one, two, three, four. They're not in very good shape. I think I'll leave that too. So, at least we found some pyrites. Now let's go find some bigger ones. All right, all we're finding is small stuff. So we're gonna go to a completely different area and see if our luck will change. So this area has some potential. See that rock there? Pyrites in it. 
There's one down in there with pyrites. Over here. They're not huge, but they're in there. There's one there too. See the pyrites in the end? Nice cubic shape there. Man. How do you get those out of there? Then? See, it's know. just in like a layer. Yeah, it's just one little layer on some of the rocks. No. Try that one. Okay, with the sun setting, what I'm noticing is rather than look straight down, I'm best off looking at a bit of a distance and look for the gold shine. And I see some right there. See it? Let's go over and take a look. Some aren't very big, or some are just an incredible disappointment, but I would not have seen that if I was looking straight down. Let's do it again. Gold. That's very small. Look at that. Oh, no way. You just found that? <laughs> right here. <laughs> nice. This is what I was staring at right here. Oh, which is just, cluster. it's just a cluster on the surface, but... Clusters. You beat me to the big one. <laughs> I see poop. Coyote poop. And I see... A little golden nugget. A little golden nugget. <laughs> it's weathered. But I'll take it. It'll fit my pocket. So there is an almost perfect, you know, yet somewhat small pyrite cube. Notice the striations. That is very typical. I just love the look of these little guys. Now, what I have here is a rock with some even smaller crystals. So I'd like to split this rock and see if there are any other crystals that have not yet been exposed and maybe expose these ones a little bit better. Okay. So far so good. Now then, I could just chip off some more pieces, but I tell you what, I think I'm going to cut it.
Isn't that pretty? It'll stand up like that, but if I don't want evidence of a cut, here's what I can do. Muriatic acid. Make sure my pyrite's not sitting in the acid. I'll just let that work away a little bit. Okay, so there we go. I only left it in the muriatic acid for about 15 minutes on each end. I noticed that the slate itself was acting a bit like a wick and it was drawing the acid up and I didn't want it to ruin the pyrite crystals. But I think the outcome is pretty nice. I'll put this on my shelf and I'll continue to enjoy it. So, hope you liked that video. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.